Hello, Patriot Contraptions here today, and today we'll be going over a review of the Trunksy X1 3D printer kit. Now, as you can see, the printer is going to be printing right along so you can get a feel for how loud it is and what could possibly be the speed you'll be printing at. So first off, right off the bat, I noticed a couple of problems with the printer. As I listed in my previous video, there were some screws that weren't there. There are screws that are not long enough. You had to drill out the bottom holes, and in some cases, there were even stripped mounting ports on the kit itself. So that can be an issue with the kit, but I was able to stumble through and get the entire thing together. Now, that set aside, the printer does print fairly nice. However, I did have a few issues as well. One of them being that the printer has a tendency to when you get up to about two and a half inches off the bed to put these annoying little like lines in the filament for about two millimeters. So to like skip like two or three layers there for some reason and I haven't quite figured out the solution to this yet. I've read up on some stuff they're saying maybe the motors pull too much current when you're doing longer prints and these prints took about four hours a piece so I have done longer prints than the one you're seeing here. This one you're watching takes about 15 minutes to do. But on the longer prints, it is said that you can draw more current if you're running all the motors at the same time, and thus it stops it. Now, that being said, in addition to skipping layers, there was on one extremely long print a time where it actually just stopped printing entirely. I don't know what happened. I wasn't in the room at the time, but I came up and I found the printer had just completely stopped. It didn't even read that it had disengaged stepper motors, it just stopped in place about 75% through the build and at about the 3 hour 40 minute mark. So I don't know if that's a consistent problem, I've only run two or three long prints on it so far. Normally I'm doing shorter prints of smaller objects to try and get used to the entire process. That being said, I found that the best setting for the printer is at the 0.2 or 0.02 millimeter setting per layer so not very thick at all per layer and then I've got it set at about 205 degrees I found to be pretty good if you got it at 0.3 millimeters that's too much for this little printer it'll give like really stringy prints but 0.2 millimeters I found is the perfect setting for this one and I've heard you can go down to point one millimeters for each layer but that's not necessarily le necessary for most of my prints so I don't feel like using the extra time and filament to make it that high of a resolution. That being said the precision of this printer is quite amazing. I've done some tolerance tests on the printer where I needed two parts to go together and so long as you have a millimeter difference between the two they tend to fit. I had one point where I made a 7 millimeter hole and I made a 6 millimeter dowel rod to go inside of it and it fit quite snugly with very little wiggle room to spare so this printer will do a pretty tight tolerance if you're into that just I wouldn't veer more than a millimeter as that seems to be about the max tightness you'll be able to get out of this also one of the major issues I had with this printer during my prints was the feeder tube for some reason the feeder tube kept popping loose and this was definitely one of the biggest issues And because when the feeder tube jumps out you're obviously skipping layers in the print. I had this happen many times, it was extremely frustrating. I ended up fixing the problem by sanding down the feeder tube and literally super gluing it into the feet extruder assembly unit there where that connects into the tensioner. Now that brings up the second issue. The tensioner itself is a pain. Literally a pain. It comes unscrewed from the motor it's attached to, so you have to check it before pretty much every print. And I actually had to go and get some longer bolts for it since the ones included turned out to not be the right length and kept coming unscrewed quite regularly. So I actually got some that are about 5 millimeters longer than what the kit includes. And that holds the motor a lot better to the tensioner on the filament. Now the tensioner itself isn't that good and I had to put clamps on it at some points just to make it feed consistently with the filament. Other than that though, once I had it worked out, it does seem to run pretty good all around. So overall, it's a 
pretty good printer for $150, I gotta say. I'm happy with it. Uh, did it take me a lot of time to get the problems worked out? Yes, I spent about probably 20 hours now working out all the problems with the kit. And I still have a few to go, like the one I set, mentioned earlier, which is it stops printing at about two and a half inches from the plate, skips a layer, and then keeps going. So if you have any ideas on that or the overheating issue where it stops entirely, please let me know as it's currently preventing me from going on any longer prints with this. Other than that, I've had a great time with this printer, and I'll be doing some reviews of the things I've printed in the future. So please subscribe. And as always, have a fantastic day. Patriot Contraptions, signing out.